Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques, and today we're going to talk about how to add boning to a lace illusion gown. Wait, what's a, what's a lace illusion gown? Are you someone who has experience with a mix of sewing, but is looking to get into the bridal sewing niche? This channel is for you. Hit subscribe to become a part of the community. So this is a lace illusion back on a gown. Basically, it's when the lace looks pretty sheer or is lined with a flesh tone that's very thin um, that allows the design of the lace to pop. Sometimes brides need a little more support. So I just overlaid this diagram over one of the gowns um, that I've put boning in. This is the gown that I'm using for our example today. That black measurement, that's where the boning is. Um, so I would cut my boning out a little bit longer than that. You'll see here in a minute. And I would cut the ribbon out even longer than the boning because it has to encase the boning. Um, so basically, you can see those two blue arrows going from left to right. I chose a spot that was equidistant from just right in between the center back seam and the side seam. And it also happened to be where a dart was ending. So that was already interrupted there, so that was fine. I lifted away the trim that's up at the top of the dress. Here's an example of a piece of boning that I've already encased for this dress. So um, you also heat seal the ends of the boning, by the way. But I'm going to wrap it with ribbon that really coordinates with the gown. This is a pink that's right in between the pink of her gown and her flesh tone, so it's very flattering. You can also just use a flesh tone that, oh my goodness, do you see that? Broken thread right off yay the joys of sewing okay let's re-thread this um so anyways a lot of times when you bone an illusion gown you're gonna want the boning to match the flesh tone of the bride so you're gonna want a rainbow of skin tone colors to choose from a lot of times I prefer to use Peter Sham ribbon for this job, uh, but with this gown, it's just so light and it's got like a little bit of a sheen to it. The satin ribbon was really pretty. So that's what we chose. So see how I'm mitering that corner? I'm just kind of angling that ribbon as I fold it. I've already sewn it that one time and let's sew one more pass on this. Here we go. This way the boning is gonna be completely encased. It's gonna give you a much finer look. As you know, when we are sewing inside of the gowns, uh, we don't always finish them off. So because this is going to be seen, we want it to be finished and pretty. And to determine the length of the boning that I needed, I really just took in the design of the gown and the shape of the bride. Some of the boning that ends right at the waist, you can see in this little sketch, sometimes if the boning stops there, the skirt pops out real quick. But if you make the boning extend just a little bit further down than that waistline, it'll give you a nice, smooth, tapered hip. And that's what we're going for in this dress. So I made the boning a little bit longer than the length of the bodice. Here I am heat sealing the ends of the encased boning. And I take a very simple approach to this. Um, basically, I'm just gonna slide this under the machine. You can see where the dart already is. That's where I'm gonna start my work as well. I'm gonna put the angled top up and the square heat sealed part at the bottom and I'm just gonna lay it back behind I'm not laying it between the layers at all I'm laying it straight behind that's why we picked a really pretty casing uh, a lot of times with these illusion backs you don't have two layers of fabric that you can put the boning between so that's why it's important to make sure um, it matches the flesh tone of the bride, but is also a very finished look. So I'm gonna go ahead and stabilize this with some pins. I'm putting them in perpendicular to the direction that I'm gonna sew. 
and I'm putting one down even into the skirt just so it doesn't get to get a funky little angle on us while we're sewing. So I'm just going to slide it right up underneath the machine and I'm going to do just a top stitch going right through everything and it's going to look just fine. As long as you get these rows of stitches that I'm getting ready to do, I do two passes, as long as you make them nice and neat, the threads matching, you know, the stitch length is the same, the stitches are perfectly parallel, as long as you do that, it's going to give you a very couture look. Um, now, if you don't want to do that top stitching or see the stitches there, you could do with a very light hand, perhaps going back and forth on the inside of the dress with a hand stitch that's kind of like a blind stitch that only goes halfway through. But many of the designer gowns that I work with, they stitch right through, just like I'm doing here. So I'm not hauling off doing anything unusual. Um, very high-end couture gowns do this exact thing and it gives you some very flattering lines. Now I'm just going to anchor the foot of this boning down to the lining of the skirt. I've overlaid another diagram here. I want to show you my choice. Why did I make the boning extend all the way down over the lining? See the sketch on the left how the boning is pink and it's swinging out over the lining. That's what I'm sewing. Okay, if you look at the diagram on the right, you could technically, you can open up where the skirt lining and outer layer meet right there at the bodice. You could open it up. You could feed that boning through there. You could do your top stitch on your bodice, split the skirt layers, turn it wrong side out, and you could stitch it down on the inside of your lining. Now there's two reasons why I didn't do that. Um, one is because I don't have to. It's finished. It looks just fine. Two, this dress is so light, it really could use one more layer of fabric in the skirt between the boning and what you see on the outside. So final stages, I'm just going to sew down that top trim and then sew down her waistband trim that she had on there, the jeweled trim. That was off for the video, obviously. But this is the finished result. You're going to press it and it looks beautiful. It does not allow the back to roll up at all and gives her lots of extra support. I know what you're looking for. You've been sewing for years, but you want to get into full-time bridal sewing. But there's something missing. You're missing the backroom secrets, the industry tips and tricks. The tools, the sources, the techniques that give you the speed and the accuracy that the industry demands. You have found it.